Hey, this is Dale from Buju Productions, and today we are doing the month of May, which is anime. It sounded good in my head, but anyways, we're doing anime, anime month, May month for May. So I've got a request to do my top 10 anime of all time, except with rules. The rules are... The anime cannot have a second season. It has to be one complete season of 12 to 24 to whatever episodes, as long as it doesn't have a sequel. And two, the movie does not count as a sequel. So if it has a movie attached to it, it still counts in this. And three, it does not count uh, if it comes from 2022, which is this year, or 2021 of last year. So all of these shows are complete basically technically do not have sequels to them if they have a sequel plan in the future then i try not to put them in there if they might have one but i'm not sure or they're not guaranteed to have one then they don't count to this so we'll have top 10 and i'm going to be using my anime list to basically do all of it because that's the easiest so let's get to the list so before we begin with any of this stuff if you like my videos or anything like that, I know anime might be a little niche market, but it is something that I do every day. Uh, if bowling was my main thing or travel was my main thing, anime would probably be the next thing that I would do. But I don't love it. Um, total weeb, otaku, whatever you want to call it. We're going to start with my five honorable mentions. Honorable mentions being uh, the animes that I didn't know if I could put into this list, but they're so good and they've actually meant something to me. So a lot of these animes will mean something to me as a person or as an athlete or as a whatever that I am. The first five, I guess, of the honorables are Sakamichi no Apollon, and I'm gonna totally butcher any of these Japanese sayings, but it's basically kids on the slope is the English translation. Um, it's, you know, got an introverted type of person like me. Uh, who is a pianist, not like me, but he meets a guy who's a big drummer and he's in the jazz scene, has really good jazz music, and it's kind of like a coming of age story. Uh, next up is Yamada-kun, uh, which is kind of a school romance anime. Yep, it's in the, it's in an honorable mention. It doesn't have a sequel to itself. It actually completes itself within 12 episodes, which is crazy because there's so much in there. There's also all these girls totally don't matter for like a good amount of it so only about two or three of them are actually matter eh. but um overall ends up well it's a romance what do you expect school anime next up is uh kaicho wa made summer which is just made summer i guess this one's an old one this one was made 2010 i don't know if it's old old but it is pretty old and uh so what is Catch up with May 7th, it's basically again school romance anime. You're gonna see a little pattern. I do watch a lot of shoujo anime. Uh, I do watch a lot of shonen as well, but remember, shonen has a lot of sequels. Penultimate one, Bakano. This one was going to be in my top 10, but um, I just don't rewatch it very much. So it's just a really solid anime that's set up in. Uh, in Chicago, I think, or or somewhere in in America, which is pretty cool. So that's why the dub is actually really good in this one. Um, and then, lastly, no game, no life. This one was just—it was so good. It it had the whole isekai right into it. But where's the sequel? Ah, oh, where's the sequel? Where is it? Come on, the movie was not a sequel. The se the movie was a prequel to it. So I'm still waiting for the sequel. A lot of people are waiting for the sequel for this. So um, that's why it's it's in my. Uh, honorable mentions number 10 so number 10 is gonna be erased boku boku dake ga inai machi ah uh, erased basically akin kara miete konai in desu yo anata no kao ga nanka usui mako de owarete ru mitai da kara fujinama san te tanin ni kokoro hirakana so da this one basically is about a guy he is just a uh, you know he's not a neat but he doesn't do much as a as a 29 30 year old guy and he doesn't have his life set up really and then he has this ability that he can kind of rewind time or see things differently so he somehow rewinds himself back after some um, events happening and he goes becomes his like 10 year old self or something or or eight 
or something, some young elementary school student, basically. And then he has to do solving some mysteries, and it, it's got really compelling details to it. Um, it keeps you on edge, and a lot of it is suspenseful. Uh, and, you know, as a kid, or what's weird is that he's a 30-year-old, but he's in a kid's body, but he doesn't act like he's a 30-year-old. He still acts like a kid, so... I don't understand how he has that, or maybe it's just his mind that is on that 30-year-old line, but he could have outsmarted anybody, um, not just as just a kid. But overall, ends really well. I think it ends really well, at least. It's it's alright. I don't rewatch it as much, so that's why it is number 10. A Hidden Gem. Now, this one, I don't know why I put it in here. I could have put Bacchano right here, but uh, this one here is the one that I always recommend for my friends to watch because... It's the most generic one, hidden gem, uh, not talked about at all, and it's 12 episodes. So it's an easy watch. It's called Kamisama no Memocho, or Heaven's Memo Pad. Heaven's Memo Pad, as you can see, the score is 7.5. It's not that great, but overall, it's the one of the best that I like to watch. Kind of mystery detective, because it's it's a neat detective, so these guys don't actually go to school. This, the main character does. Um... And then he works with this uh, girl named Alice, who's the neat detective. Overall, you know, it goes from a character, the main character itself is not a, uh, he's not a badass, he's not a popular dude, he's just kind of a regular dude, and then he just gets pushed into random things. And uh, so he's not like OP or anything, he's just kind of in the background most of the time, but he tries to push himself. And, you know, that's what you gotta do, you, you're, you're not gonna be somebody talented you gotta work hard for it but this guy's like i don't know what to do so overall the anime is a hidden gem to me um that's why it's number nine but it's not gonna be any higher because it's not the best <laughs> next up is number eight so number eight is gonna be nagi no asakara asakara Oscar, A Lull in the Sea. This one is actually one of the ones that I watched when I first watched anime. It was probably in the top, maybe in the first 10 that I actually watched. So the reason that I really liked this is because of the rewatchability. I came back and rewatched it again, I think in dub. Um, but it's overall a really solid anime that has some mystery, some um, school life, it's got a time skip, which is great. Halfway through the uh, season, there's a time skip, which that's why it's 26 episodes. Uh, because after f 14th episode, I think, there's a time skip that jumps up for like five years, which is pretty good. I like to see those progressions when they start with kids and then they grow up to be adults. Well, some of them do at least. Um, and what made this show really well was that the... Uh, mystic, the mystiques of the ocean and of the sea stayed as the mystiques of the whole show. Um, it wasn't like dropped at any point. And a good example of that is this. This anime came out last year. It's called um, The Aquatope of White Sand. It was sort of fantasy. It, it had a lot of like the ocean and there was this reminiscence where they can go into the sea and you can like feel the dreamlike um scenarios happening and that's why it has well it's gone now but the genre was um in a fantasy setting and then they dropped it halfway through the season and i'm like what the hell what happened this was like the best part no it became a slice of life it became um a friend you know a girl and a girl having friends and enjoying life working in an aquarium but i went that's such a letdown but the difference was that nagi no asakura was that they kept going all the way throughout and 26 episodes finishing it out a little bit of romance not too much which is great and uh overall good um setting <gasps> next up is your lie in april yes as i said there's no sequels so the ones that i can pull up are like your Lie in April. Your Lie in April is the one that first got me to cry. Yes, men cry with in anime. Yes, they do. 
but uh, this one look at the rating 8.67 it's got a million users on it it's it's a very popular one now there's gonna be a lot of people to go man this one sucks it's just you know a bunch of junior high kids sobbing but yeah yeah it's basically everybody sobbing is, is what it is and the music is really good like coming from somebody who played the violin um, and has been in that kind of scene where like competitions are happening um, yeah it's it's right up there where um, where we went like we went to regionals and stuff and we actually went and took a bus to a college to do the actual, actual regionals kind of like that where you did solos and groups and duets and things um, and then the overall just music was just super sad it was super good um, and it kept you compelled like you wanted to watch um, Kose, Kose Arama is the uh, child prodigy and he was known as like the perfect player in piano but then his mother had an issue and then he just stopped playing and then he, he's working his way back up but you can see the progression of him being really bad to being extremely good at the very end so I love that and uh, they're, they're young enough to have some growing pains for that but the ending is just crazy and it's just uh, I'm gonna tear up just talking about it <laughs> The next one is so sad as well, Anohana. Uh, this was uh, only 11 episodes with an OVA, I think, or, or a movie, but the movie was more of a recap. Oh man, how do I, how do I describe this one? So uh, there's six friends, they were all in, you know, they all grew up with each other in elementary, and uh, one of them disappears. Uh, for some okay she dies basically there, there you go there's the spoiler she died and the five others you know grow up to be go to high school and they all separate basically and then one day she shows up just out of the blue to the uh, main character was his Jinta um, and he sees her and she's like a ghost basically because no one else can see her but him so and he loved her you know in elementary which is super like very adult based but like man they were just kids um but they all get back together they try to figure out you know friendship things and at the end of course they all get back together and it's just the saddest thing because they all are remembering this girl her name's memma and uh the, the ending is just this tear fest basically um, so, same thing for Your Lie in April. It's super good. Uh, it's shorter though than Your Your Lie. Your Lie is like 22 episodes. This one's only 11. So this one's a, you know, quick. You know, you want to watch something that will cheer you up? You can watch Anohana. Um, and it's perfect. It says the flower we saw that day. The flowers. It's Memo. Uh, I think number six. I think uh, it's called Ski Gakire, which is uh. The Moon is Beautiful, uh, which doesn't have much to do with the actual anime, but this one is when you talk about coming of age, you're talking about um, a school life romance, uh, very young romance too, they're I think in junior high actually. Osamu Gazai was a writer. He once said how excruciatingly arduous and unbearable it is to live. He must have been talking about middle schoolers. But this guy, this boy, he meets a girl. They date, they have growing pains, they do a bunch of stuff, they try to keep their relationship as a secret, they are, their friends are pretty supportive, their friends are whatever. It's really good actually overall, It's uh, it has an 8.09, but I swear when I looked at it, when I um, saw it, when I first watched it, it had like an 8.5. So, um, but then again, as I said, it's just a school romance anime, so, um, but the character design actually is really good, the time of pastel -y, um liquidy uh flow to it all right this is gonna be a little weird but okay so number five or four four i think so let's get curious four, five this was four top three is the top three
but <laughs> the fourth one is kind of controversial. Suzumiya Haruhi no Yutsu, which is the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. This one is OG, actually. This thing aired in 2006. 2006? I wasn't even in an into anime until about 2016. So, this is 10 years older than the first time. But, it's such a good uh, start. Think of anime back in 2006. There wasn't much into it. You know, you got the big series like Naruto, One Piece, Dragon Ball Z were big, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. Those guys, they're OGs. This one was the start of the setup of school life animes, slice of life, school. Um, it was five characters, starting with Haruhi Suzumiya, who was just this bubbly, great girl. I actually just rewatched this. This was this is why I can get to it. Kyon, he's like my one of my favorite characters um, because of his monologues, and the actual dub to it's actually really good too. Aliens, time travelers, and espers, man, one's enough. But no. I got to hang out with all three, and then there's Haruhi, who's got the craziest power of them all. Uh, then you got the three um, Esper, Alien, and Time Travelers, who just support the cast, and it's really fun. They, they go on adventures, they do all the school stuff, you know, they, they go do a trip, they um, do a bunch of random things, the culture festival, all that stuff. Uh, there is, the problem of the, of the thing is that it's technically 14 episodes it's also technically 26 episodes because there's eight episodes of called the endless eight it is the most brutal watch to watch it's two hours because you think it's it's eight episodes so it's 20 something minutes about two hours or so two and a half hours then you're watching the same episode every single time with just little changes to them I cannot believe people could watch that uh, that all throughout, but I watched it. <laughs> it's hilarious. You're as I said, you're watching it over and over and over and over and over. About maybe around episode four, they realize that they're doing things over and over and over, and then at the end, it's just like that's the reason that they're doing things over and over. It's the best. Uh, but actually, the main reason I put this up on my top four is because of the movie. The movie itself. The disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya really follows Kion and his adventures and stuff again. Again, this it's all about Kion really. Haruhi's the title character, but he's the main character, and he goes through all bunch of crap um, to you know enjoy his life as a high school student. And the the movie itself actually is a um, real treat to watch. And when I actually watch this, I don't know what has an eight point six two. This was a 9.0 when I saw it on the on the list. You have to watch the first series first though for the movie. That's why it's technically a sequel and that's why I had to say the rule was sequels can't be the movie because the reason is because of this particular series. So it's not in my top three. The actual Haruhi Suzumiya anime has said the Endless Eight is crazy but then there are some portions of it like especially the culture festival that I don't really care about. But overall, it's a great setup, and as I said, 2006, this was a way to set up anime in the future, so they were the ones who were uh, a building block for anime. And they're very popular still um, to this day. Top 3. This one should have a sequel, but it does not as of yet. So, this next one's called The Great Pretender. The Great Pretender is about a Japanese dude who is a con artist, and he goes in and... He picks up on the wrong person. Um, his name is Laurent. He's a French dude, I think. Uh, and he actually is a himself a con artist too. So they pair up, and they actually go to LA first, and they do a bunch of stuff. But the beginning episode, the first episode, they uh, they have an English and Japanese. They just do it both at the same time. And then at the like five ten minutes later, they're like, "Oh, we're gonna just cut it and just do only Japanese, only English." If they did it like all throughout the whole series, this thing would be even higher. But if not, anyways, it's a good story overall. Um, they they don't just stay in LA. They go to LA. They go to Singapore. They go back to Japan. Um, and there should be sequels to it. It's just we're waiting for it. This thing was actually shown up as a Netflix original or Netflix um, exclusive, so it's hard to find it other than on Netflix itself, but it's a really good watch. Um, I really loved the uh, 
the fun con artist plays and the settings keep changing and it keeps it nice and fresh every time. Number two, Full Bell Alchemist Brotherhood, F A F A B or F M F M A B, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Now this is the one that I said that it's more than twenty four episodes. It's sixty four episodes, um, and don't watch regular Full Metal Alchemist unless you really want to. But the Brotherhood is the best series. Um, got a nine point one four. Look at that high rating. It's it's really good. Um, there's a lot to ask to talk about this one, but basically they're uh, alchemy brothers, both uh, Elric brothers, Edward and Alphonse. Alphonse is like this metal dude, but he's a he's a kid who can't age, um, and his body was stolen by alchemy something somethings. So uh, Edward's duty is to try to get him to back into his body, but it was actually their fault to begin with. Uh, goes throughout a whole series, a whole lot of cast. The cast is great. Um, and it just keeps going. It's a full journey. They go from their home to the city center to a bunch of small villages, um, and then they're just fighting one big end game monster, tyrant, uh, Fure, basically is what it was. Uh, set in a very European war raged kind of setting. So overall very good uh it's just i cannot say anything more than this is the one to watch if you're looking for a longer uh longer type of anime full Al full alchemist brotherhood is the best <laughs> But it's not my favorite anime of all time. No, no, no. It's not. The only reason is because I can't relate to the episodes as much as this one. Number one. This is my favorite anime of all time, but it doesn't have a 10 on my anime list because I'm so stuck up to not put it up there. And it doesn't have the best rating. It's got an 8.41. It's still a really good rating. My number one anime is Kaze Gatsuko Futero or Run With The Wind. Run With The Wind is an anime that is, if you have ever seen Haikyuu, Haikyuu is a volleyball anime. This is like the sister anime to that. Uh, but instead of volleyball, they're track stars, or not even stars, they're really just in track and field. And the uh, main character looks like Kageyama. His name is Kakuru. He is a, uh, he starts off with just a random high, uh, college student. Oh yeah, by the way, they're in college. They're not in high school or anything like that. This is a college setting, which is really good. It's refreshing. Um, a lot of times they don't go to college as much because college tends to be a little different than high school settings. So the, the guy to his left in the, in the pictures, Haiji, he is like a fourth year university student who um, has been wanting to run something called uh, Hakune Ekiden which is this very, it's actually a very uh, popular uh, marathon that actually happens in real life. It's like a top college like race to do. Um, like that's like, not, it's not the number one, but it is one of the top to do um, for collegiate uh, things in Japan. But he basically grabs a ragtag group of people who don't want to run, but some of them do. Uh, and then just makes them run it and there is a lot of progression it's a 23 episode um, anime so it's a little longer they go from a progression of i don't want to do this this is stupid and kakura is like a super selfish guy and he's like I just, dude i want to just run but he really gets them into a team atmosphere and you know hones in on their uh their specialties and they actually run the hakode Ekiden, which is great um the reason why it resonates to me so much is that from bowling, I started out, I'm starting out as a solo player, uh, you know, I, I played with some friends and stuff, but I wasn't super serious, um, but then you got really good, well, I didn't really get really good, but you do notice the gap between my friend's bowling and my bowling, like, quite distinctively. It's because I worked hard for it, I bought the equipment, 
I went to the bowling alley every week or every, you know, twice a week or something. And I sh it shows up. But how to, you know, get up to the next level, I started out by joining a league, by joining a team and just bowling with the team and learning how to do that. Then going bowling tournaments and stuff. Um, it is progression to start. So then you have goals. Then you want to, you know, hit these goals. For them, the goal was Hakone Ekden, and they were able to make it. So let's see if I can make it too. But that's why it's my number one anime that I'll ever recommend people to do. It's a sports anime, so, um, you know, it's not like a romance shoujo that people don't maybe get turned off for. This is just a sports, you know, uh, drama uh, anime. And overall, it's my favorite. <laughs> That was my top 10 anime that I would recommend that is not a sequel based story that doesn't have too many episodes. Uh, that wasn't from this year because if it was from this year, Spike's Family is good, uh, Dress Up Darling is really good. There's some 2021 animes that I really liked. Um, animes that were like isekai ones like uh, Mushoku Tensei, Rise of, uh, Rising of the Shield Hero, those guys, they're all sequels and they're going to have sequels over them, so I can't put those things in my list. Demon Slayer would have been in my list as well, Attack on Titan, those guys, but unfortunately they're not. We'll maybe talk about them later at some other time, but anyways, this is Daniel here at Buju Productions uh, with my top 10 anime here. Let me know in the comments if you do agree with that so if you don't agree of course you don't agree because it's my top 10 so regardless so we'll go ahead and do that and i'll see you guys next week